Good morning, folks. A little bit of an intro there for you. I didn't really catch much of the footage uh, because we were so busy yesterday. When this package arrived, I just could not wait to get it out of the box. So here it is. This is the, I believe, FEM. Let's have a look. Here's the uh, booklet. We'll come back to this in a minute. The 10 BEVM Can Seamer by Innovus Engineering. So it's the 10 series. Would you just look at that for a fine piece of art, folks? It is absolutely gorgeous. It's substantial, it's heavy. It's gonna last a lifetime, I just know it. What I'm gonna have to do though at some point is whip these Allen bolts out and have a look at the inside. You know what I'm like, I can't help myself. I've got to see how things work although i've got a good idea anyway so let's run through uh, what was in the box well obviously the seamer itself then we've got a few more bits over here this is a folded perspex casing which goes up here to protect the seaming rolls i imagine from too much splashing and also they sent in the box a brand new set of Allen keys so we can take the covers off and on as needed. They also sent a brand new set of spanners, a 30mm draper spanner, a C spanner, a magnetic bendy thing and an instruction manual. So this really is the mutts nuts folks so I don't know where uh, yeah there's a copyright on this so I shouldn't really show you it all but you get the idea anyway I'm really really over the moon with uh, with the machine this is how it was packaged with the lid on the top as you saw yesterday's video so when it arrived we couldn't help but use it. Oh, and also, we have the interchangeable inserts for doing different size cans. 500s, 330s, and of course, in here we have, this one is for the 440s. So you basically place your can on there, machine on. So this centre roll is running when the machine's on. And then you place your can on here, and... You pull her up nice and tight with this lever, just like that, and uh, she feels good. She's got a nice detent on her, and then uh, you just hit this top lever across once, and you'll see the rolls in action. There they go, just as quick as that. What a piece of kit. Let me turn this off so it's not too noisy. Yeah, so yesterday I couldn't help myself. As soon as it arrived, we were already in the middle of several other jobs but I just had to put some beer in can. So that's what we did. So these cans are sitting here today. Uh, they've got the pail in. So the pail was a keg of, a 30 litre keg of pail that we were probably gonna bin. And uh, I decided to run it through the seamer and can filler and uh, just put some in can because tomorrow we're gonna have a little bit of a day off before it all kicks off for the reopening on the 4th of July which has been announced yesterday more good news and I thought that these cans would be nice for us to just uh, you know share um, tomorrow with a few friends before we start to be at work full tilt to get the place ready to go uh, so a couple of things that I learnt whilst filling those cans we already knew that the solenoid valves that I'd got for the job, which are here, weren't really up to it. So these were eBay specials for a tenner, 3 8 push fit, 12 volt, normally closed solenoid valves, food grade plastic or nylon. So um, what happens with them is the flow rate's quite low because the orifice on the inside is pretty small and then because of the way the 
solenoid actuates when it's closed there does seem to be just a little bit of a drip coming out the bottom of the tubes therefore it throws off the filling level of the cans if they don't all fill simultaneously which they don't which is quite odd the center one seems to be favored and then the two outside ones come in when the center one's finished anyway we've got these from solenoid valves uk 18 quid each 15 mil push fit i believe it said um eight millimeter orifice which is almost the size of the internal diameter of these uh, beer lines so what I'm thinking about doing is just replacing all these solenoid valves here for the liquid anyway with these and hopefully that will do it if we still get a few drip issues then what I'm thinking about doing is moving these solenoids up onto the front of the filler arm assembly so we've got two sets of solenoids and these turn off when these turn off so we've got two closing points don't know how it's going to work we'll try these first and if that works then Robert's your mother's brother problem solved and another problem that we also came across which isn't insurmountable is uh, well you can't fill from keg already carbonated beer with this machine so it foams like bilio but i knew that was going to happen anyway because we have the exact same problem when we're trying to fill bottles which is why people have counter pressure bottle fillers you know the way to go don't you folks can conditioning and bottle conditioning fill your bottles and cans with uh, post fermentation beer it's flat it's not gassy it's not been pressurized it's not carbonated you won't have any foaming issues then and then what we're going to do is prime prior to filling and then fill, seam and condition at 18 to 20 degrees for a week and then it's ready to go out to market. That's the way we're going to do it. That's the way we do it with the bottles. That's the way we're going to do it with the cans. One thing I have noticed though is that we're going to have to find a way to mix that priming sugar into the beer because if we were to use the newer fermenting vessels as conditioning tanks and transfer the fermented beer from these ones across into these ones or the other way around well we can't put head pressure on these tanks unfortunately because of the way they're designed we might be able to get one or two psi on there but certainly no more than that not enough to feed the machine and of course you can't just tip priming sugar into the tank and stir it with a spoon that ain't gonna work no sir so what we've decided to do as I explained last week is we'll put priming sugar into some sanitized kegs we'll flow the beer into the keg and then immediately because that will purge it with CO2 of course but putting the beer into the keg will cause some mixing action some turbulence to mix that priming sugar around uniformly into the beer and then we'll take it out of the keg and we'll put it into can that way and I think that will be fine so when we're ca when we're bottling for instance we do exactly the same thing with casks we put some priming sugar in a cask we fill the cask up out of the fermentation vessel and then we hoist the cask up into the air on this handy dandy cask lift here and then tap it and connect it to the three-headed bottle filler and fill via gravity that works a treat and we've had some really rave reviews from the local community about our bottled beer so I'm pretty sure that if we follow the similar method follow a similar method for the can beers then bingo bango it's gonna be uh, another winning formula so there we have it folks say hello to my little friend you know this is the most money I've ever spent on a single piece of equipment in my life and when it's arrived and I'm looking at the quality of it the workmanship the thickness of the steel everything about it is just saying to me 
good move. It was the right move. I'm extremely happy with it. And within the next week or two, guys, you are going to see it in action. But there we go. Absolute winner for HB. Anyway, I'm going to end this particular vlog here because this was a talk about canning and the conclusion effectively, apart from a filling video of the can seeming project. Maybe one more to come. Uh, but what I want to do today is start another vlog, which will be out tomorrow morning, about what we're going to do today in terms of getting ready for using this machine and getting ready for opening up the pub. So uh, don't forget to hit that little bell, ring the bell. You'll get a notification when the new video is out in the morning and uh, you'll be able to carry on watching from there. So we'll see you tomorrow, folks. Thanks for tuning in. And, uh, well, look at her. She really is a thing of beauty. So before we go, just a little peek on the inside. I hope I'm not revealing any trade secrets here, folks. But, uh, well, it is what it is. It's my machine now. I can show you what I like. Hey! <laughs> so, yes, here we go. So it's belt-driven initially for the main uh, motor and pulley. But then we're chain-driven down here. And there are a couple of um, camshafts. So this bottom cam operates the left hand roller and the top one operates the right hand roller and if I turn this on you'll be able to see the whole machine in action so as you can see the top roller the pulley the top V pulley is spinning around rather fast and this chain is geared down in terms of speed but the receiver is also spinning at the same speed as the top pulley so if we just hit this section across this handle it engages the chain and the two mechanisms the two uh, cams ride on these idle pulleys and they push slowly I'll show you here you see how it pushes them slowly outwards and then once again for the third time for this side And then you can see that function gives us this movement. Beautiful piece of engineering. Now, the most important part of this whole component is getting these rollers set in the correct position. Will you look at the size of those bolts and those arms? This is made to last. So the distance between the bottom of this roller and the top of this roller is absolutely critical same on this side for getting a perfect seam on the cans uh, to pinch basically to pinch the tops this section around here so if we don't get that right then we could get a leaky can but anyway I just thought I'd add this little bit on the end so we can have a look at the internal workings of the old can seamer Womp, womp, womp.